Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Volkswagen Time, 2003, Passat, 1.8 liter turbo. This car looks like it's been sitting for a while and the customer wants to get it back on the road. Customer complaint is, most of the time it's a really long crank. Like, he has to crank it 5 to 10 times, it eventually fires up, and then it runs perfectly fine. So, kind of a strange complaint. It has 152,000 miles on it. Like I said, it's been sitting for a while. And um, let's just scan it for codes and see if there's any clues to this long crank time. So our battery charger is at 13 and a half volts. Battery is fully charged. And uh, right off the bat, we'll do a full health report. We have eight codes there. He said something, the connector for the ignition coil was uh, loose, so these ignition activation codes, 2413, don't pay too much attention to that. But this code right here, 341, camshaft position sensor circuit range performance. That's absolutely key. I think that's where we're going with this car. So let's try to start up while looking at live data. I don't know if during the crank we'll be able to see live data. Um, let's see if we can get it started. All right, so looking through live data, I could not find camshaft speed, only engine speed. So G28, that's gonna be our RPM sensor. So let's just look at those four data pits while cranking. Coolant temp, mass airflow, and throttle angle. So it's cool, it's a stick shift, clutch down, and not that time, let's try again. Okay, so I just almost bumped the key for a second and it fired up. Let's try that again. So I'm going to hold the key and crank. Nothing there, and just bump the key for a second. <laughs> so maybe that's the trick. <laughs> you can't crank it for more than a second, and hopefully it'll fire up after one second. So let's chase this P0341 code, look up some information on all data, circuit diagrams, and put a scope on this thing, cam crank, see what the signal looks like. Um, we can unplug the camshaft position sensor, see what happens. If it sets a different code, we'll def we're definitely on the right track. Uh, hopefully this shouldn't take too long. All right, let's look up some information. So, camshaft position sensor, 1.8 liter engine on front of cylinder head behind camshaft timing belt cover and sensor housing. So right up front, there it is. And then the wiring diagram so G40 is the component number. We have three pins, five volt ground, and the middle pin is the signal to our engine computer. So we can measure either at the sensor or at the computer, whichever one is easier to get to. Now for the crankshaft position sensor, or the engine RPM sensor, G28, I'm sure there's nothing wrong with that because the RPM is reading fine on the scanner, but we still want to check that on the scope. And the wiring diagram for that, for G28, again, I guess has a pigtail, two wires go to the engine computer, and one wire is the shield goes to ground. So for this sensor I expect to see a sine wave. For the camshaft sensor, G40, I expect to see a square pulse, 0 to 5 volts. So the engine computer, I looked it up, lives under this cover. So let's see what's easier to get to where we can hook up our scope. Alright, so I wiggled off the timing cover 
And here's our camshaft position sensor. And usually these rubber covers come off pretty easy. And here we have our three wires. So pretty easy to probe. You can um, plug that. Okay. And at least measure for five volts and ground. Oh, we can even back probe it right there. And then the signal when the engine's spinning and running. We'll see what happens. All right, so with the sensor unplugged, let's turn the key on and do some voltage measurements. So voltmeter is grounded, so if it finds So the meter works. Let's check all three pins. So let's check for the 5 volt reference. Yep, perfect, 5 volts. Middle pin. So it's definitely continuous to the computer. It's actually 12 volts. That's surprising. And then the ground, 32 millivolts, but we want to load the ground with a test light from battery positive. It's going to light up if it finds a good ground. And Yep, it has a good ground. Okay, great. So now with the sensor plugged in, let's um, get on that signal wire and put a scope on there, see what it reads. Actually, one experiment I want to do before hooking up the scope is leave the sensor unplugged, clear out the codes, crank it over, see if it starts, or see if it sets a circuit code versus the performance code. So, clear fault code in the ECM. Yes. Okay. Read DTC, no DTCs. Key off. It fired right up. Read DTC. Go back in the ECM. It's it's running rough. Yeah, it's not happy without that cam sensor. P0343 camshaft position sensor circuit high input. Okay, perfect. So as expected, the code is different now. So, 99% sure, even without the scope, is that this thing needs a camshaft position sensor. But, you know, let's say, what if the timing is off or something? The logic here, you know, it's German logic, so even if maybe the signal is fine, but it's shifted, then you'll set, you know, a camshaft performance code. Um, kind of like on TDIs, they, they like to do that. But, let, let's see if it cranks right up after a shutdown. No. Okay. Pretty normal start. Starts up fine. And one more time. So maybe it guesses which cylinders to fire. Third one, okay. <laughs> let's, uh, let's measure that signal. Here's the scope setup. Channel one is gonna be on our crankshaft position sensor. So those blue and gray wires go to you know, the coil itself and the black is just the shield. So we'll just tie into one of those. And then the signal wire on the cam sensor. So let's hook, set up the scope, crank this thing over see what the signals look like. So here are the two channels, key on, and crank it. Let's wait till the next screen.
Guys, camshaft position sensor is not going to fix this car. I'll tell you that right now. Signal looks beautiful, doesn't it? Still runs kind of rough. Let's go into our ECM. So I bet the timing is going to be off on this car. Can we fix it? No parts required? Maybe. <laughs> Read DTC. Here we go. 341. Camshaft position sensor circuit range performance. So if you fire the parts can of this thing with a cam sensor, wouldn't fix it, that would be a waste of money. Alright, so we have a very nice waveform. You see the cam is kind of too skinny, too fat, too skinny, too fat. And then nice sink notch on the crank. So it should be one cam revolution for every two crank revolutions. So right here, crank no start, crank no start. finally fires up right there so we can see if the camshaft shifted at all and we'll see you know does this have variable valve timing I'll have to do some research it might and which camshaft is the sensor on because there's only one pulley let's do a close visual inspection here so first of all intake and exhaust cam and the timing belt drives the exhaust cam and then there's a chain on the back here looks like with an oil control solenoid so the intake camshaft can be phased and that's the one that the sensor is looking at so that makes sense now the timing belt actually looks pretty fresh so does the tensioner so does the shiny water pump so I'm wondering if this problem started when someone did a timing belt job in this thing. Um, let's see if there are marks that we can align or if this is more complicated if you have to use some special tools to sync this whole system. Looking at the timing belt installation procedure, so there should be a mark on a camshaft sprocket and the line should line up right there with the timing cover. Also on the crankshaft there should be some kind of mark right there just crankshaft to cylinder number one so let's see if we can find those marks okay so there's the mark on the camshaft and here's the mark on the timing cover so we're actually really close and then on the harmonic balancer I don't know if the camera's going to pick this up If it f decides to focus, okay, there it is. There's a white mark right there, but I don't see a corresponding mark on whatever the front of the engine. So let's set the camshaft. I'm going to just gently turn the engine over by using the crank bolt because otherwise you can't really get to or the cam bolt, just real gentle, so the whole engine is turning, so let's line that up right about there, and see where the crank mark is, it's not up and down, so let me get in there with a borescope, see if I can locate the actual mark on the harmonic balancer. All right, we're going old school here. If we can't find the timing mark, I know that mark is not directly vertical, but, you know, the engine's kind of tilted sideways anyways, but is this TDC or is it not TDC? Well, I put a screwdriver in there, took out the spark plug, and just marked it right there. So let's turn the camshaft. Let's keep turning it this way 
See if the screwdriver starts to go up or down. Starts going down. Okay, let's go back the other way. Again, this is to be real careful. Starts going down. That seems to be TDC, doesn't it? Physical TDC. It starts going down. So when the mark is after the notch, it starts going down and the mark is before the notch. That seems to be spot on, doesn't it? Hmm. So the only other variable here is this timing chain between the exhaust and intake camshafts on the rear of the cylinder head. So the instructions say, you know, the, the, these uh, cams should have timing marks. So we're already at TDC. We just need to remove the valve cover and inspect these marks. There's supposed to be 16 rollers in between the two marks. So if you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I guess they count this as 1 and that's 16. Interesting. So I think that's pretty easy to do. Just pop off this valve cover and look at this chain. So I know someone's been here before. So I took off three bolts but that one's missing. That one's missing. Um, that's out of the way. We just need to do one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven, eight, nine. And hopefully the valve cover should pop right up. Alright, valve cover's off. Pretty straightforward. So, that arrow is lined up. That arrow is lined up. <laughs> <laughs> what gives? What are we missing here? Dang. We can count the number of rollers. So if we start 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Is that right? Or is it going to be one over here? That's kind of difficult to say. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. It's only fifteen rollers, not sixteen. Let me, uh. Look, they have marks on there. White mark there. White mark there. Are those OEM? I don't know. So that looks in time. Chain is perfect. It's not loose or anything. Popped off the actual camshaft sensor. So it's a little window. Here's the reluctor. Now what do you see behind the reluctor? Let's see if I can zoom in here. Victor Rhines. I don't think that's an OEM seal. And how do you get to that seal? Well, you have to remove this reluctor wheel. So, okay. <laughs> Does it look like it was uh, messed with or bent a little bit? I don't know. But is there only one way you can go on the end of the camshaft? That's a great question. Let's uh, look up that information. Might have to take this bolt out and do an inspection on here. If that's the case, that would be like deja vu. So the owner of this car is the same guy with that Volkswagen TDI that had the really weird rear main seal synchronization problem. 
You'll have to watch that video. That one really kicked my ass. Wouldn't that be funny if this was a similar problem? Like the reluctor wheel is just on incorrectly on, you know, on that shaft. Well, I couldn't find a picture or instructions for how to orient this tooth wheel. Uh, you would think there's a locator. There's a little circle over there. So I just marked with a black marker a mark as is. And now what I do is just take that shutter wheel off and it should come off should come right off. Let's see what's going on here. Let me uh, get that bolt out. It seems like it is located by something. It's definitely located. Alright, so here it is. And you can't really mess this up. It's nice and located by that tab. Right there. Do any of the teeth seem bent or misshapen? No. What gives? So I just noticed something. When I was removing this reluctor wheel, you know, loosening this bolt, the camshaft shifted a little bit. And this gizmo, this uh, tensioner slash phaser, oil controlled assembly started lifting up. So how does this work? When the phaser lifts up, this chain effectively gets shorter and the intake camshaft gets, does it get advanced or retarded? So the engine's spinning this way, and the camshaft turns this way, it's getting more advanced, correct? Is that right? No, that's not correct. Advancing would be leading. So basically, if this one is here, advance would be, this notch would be going that way. So basically, with this all the way down, this camshaft is all the way advanced. Is that right? Yes. What I think should be the case is on startup, the camshaft should be all the way retarded in its whatever home position, and then it should advance from there. So, so if this is all the way up, then this notch would be significantly that way. Right? So is this camshaft retarded by a tooth on the chain? As I keep counting, you know, if we start from this roller right here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, not 16. That, I think that's the problem. This notch should be one tooth over, and then it would be 16. Is that the whole issue? How could this jump? Let me call the owner up and ask him, have these camshafts ever been out of this engine? And if so, that would give me more confidence in saying your intake camshaft is one tooth retarded or advanced. Retarded on the rear chain. A lot of variables here. <laughs> so timing belt's fine. Exhaust cam is you know fixed in place at TDC. But on the intake cam, we have all these variables here. You know, which position is this supposed to be in in default? But the 16 rollers does not match OEM service info. We have 15. So this camshaft should be one tooth. We need to advance it one tooth. And then I think everything will be fine. So there's nothing wrong with the reluctor wheel or the camshaft position sensor or the timing belt. The problem is going to be here. I think we're one tooth off on this chain. Man, that's uh, that's crazy.